Hello, bonjour, namaste, ni hao, and oh hi, everybody. What is going on? It is Gail Riot here. Welcome back to the YouTube channel once again for another Don Machi Memoria Freeze video. And today, we're here to talk about the new game mode that's come to the game, the replacement to the Undertale Skira game mode. It is the Telskira Abyss. I'm ready to talk about it. I think I've gotten a better idea of the game mode. I've also seen a lot of people's opinions. I posted a community post actually yesterday on my YouTube channel, which you can go and check out in the community tab, where I asked people about their thoughts on the game mode. And obviously I saw what people had to say there. I also checked the other Discord servers, some other familiar Discord servers, as well as the main Reddit Discord server, right? To see how people felt about the game mode. And generally I wanted to get an idea of how people felt before I made this video. Now that I have an idea of what other people feel and how I also feel about this game mode, I feel pretty confident in making this video and talking to you guys about the game mode. So of course, if you guys go on to enjoy this video, please be sure to leave a like, subscribe to the channel for more Danmachi content. We are so close to a thousand subscribers and leave a comment down below if you haven't been able to give your thoughts either on Discord or on the YouTube comment section in my community post. Put it down in the comment section of this video so that I can see what you guys have to say about this game mode as well as any changes you'd like to see potentially. I think that's a better way of doing it is to see how you guys can probably improve this game mode because we know that they're not going to change the foundation of this game mode. The foundation is going to stay the same. So how can you improve it to make it better while also keeping the idea of this game mode and the ideologies of this game mode the same? All right. Let me know in the comment section down below. All right. Tell Skira Abyss, let's get into it, shall we? So, I have an attempt live right now, but to give you guys an idea of how it works, you know, before I get into this side of things and the actual opponents, basically. When you get into the game mode for the first time on day one, you only have the Braver class unlocked. When you get into the Braver class and you use an attempt there, you have to win all five rounds, just like here. You can see round one, the, you, you tick off the first box, you go to round two, you tick off the second box, and so on and so forth. You have to beat all five rounds to go to Battle Princess. From there, you do the same thing again. You win five battles, you go from Battle Princess to King. From King, you go to Jester, which is where we're at right now, where I'm at. And then from Jester, you go to Hero. Right now, if I'm not mistaken, there are only around, I want to say, 50-ish players maybe in Hero, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, well, it seems like there's at least 50 players in Hero. I know in, in uh, where I'm at, I'm in the top 150. We're in King right now. There are some players in Jester below us because they got a lower score due to various reasons, which I'll come on to in just a second and how the scoring system works. But effectively, you can estimate around 50 to 100 players are in Hero, which is not a bad return, to be quite honest. I was expecting around 100 players to be in the hero class to be quite honest especially with the amount of players that are on the na server which we can estimate to be around 5500 to 6000 players at most right i think it makes sense for 100 players the top one percent effectively to be here the top one percent should be around 50 players actually funnily enough so the fact that we have the top two percent players in hero most likely is pretty solid in my personal opinion now, the thing with this game mode is that it incentivizes you to have a really strong box because the thing is when you go into this battle, right, and when you click on this, let's say I want to go up against this team, for example, I just want to go up against this team, right? Um, I have already used my attempt, uh, update attempts as well. I wanted to see if I could get a good start, but alas, we have to take what we are dealing with. Actually, you know what? I'm going to go up against this player. This player is actually going to be easier to fight off against. Um... So the problem with this game mode that a lot of people have, and I'll get onto it and how I feel about it later on in the video once we get through some of my other major concerns about the game mode, is that it incentivizes you on having a extremely strong box. And by strong box, I mean a lot of units that are high MLB or, or high limit break, I should say, and or MLB and are capable of being part of a strong war game setup. Unfortunately, I'm one of those players who's very much in like, I have enough teams, but I don't have enough teams, you know, at the same time. So for me, the best way to do this game mode is using three teams because the way this game mode works is that when you face off against an opponent, let's say I face off uh, against Phoenix in round one, I cannot use the team I use in round one until round four. And then the round two team cannot be used until round five. The round three team, of course, can't be used at all after you use it. So the minimum amount of teams you need for this game mode is three. And if you want to get a really good score because of the way the game incentivizes scoring, 
uh, or has its scoring system, I should say, you need to have five different teams, basically, because if you go into the bonus details, you can see that there is a first time participation bonus. There is an assist first time participation bonus. There is even a memoria first time participation bonus, which I feel like is a little bit redundant. I don't think this should be there at all with how limited memorias are. We only get one a month. And of course, the last, the first time we started getting memorias was, if I'm not mistaken, at the end of the fourth anniversary, which is basically only 18 months right so people have around 18 memorias at most and you need 15 memorias going into this i think i have all of them right so if i were to calculate so one two three four five six seven 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 times three is 21 22 so we have 22 memorias you can use 15 of them basically not all of them are fantastic so in all honesty you can kind of ignore that first time uh, memoria participation bonus in all honesty it's not something you should even worry about in all honesty the main issue lies within the actual units themselves the fact that you can only use uh you know three teams at most a lot of players especially new players will probably struggle with this sort of thing right so that's something to acknowledge and something to consider is that well you know this isn't really amazing for players who aren't you know well off in terms of their box their box isn't strong enough right so okay that's one issue right so let's go and let, let's go into this fight let's see what we can do here i'm gonna just take a, a random set of uh, memor memorias for now we'll use thunder and dark attack damage we'll use uh let's see if i have my uh water and wind one we can use that as well and then we'll just chuck in hp region why not right let's use this uh, set of memorias and let's see what happens now you might be wondering why is my backline so weird gale what's what's wrong with that well, another thing that they make you do is that there is a bonus element and bonus killer skill when it comes to this game mode. So if you go over to the start screen again and you look down on the bottom right, my face is covering some of it. There is a season bonus. So this season, fire and wind are the strong elements. I say strong elements. They give you a bonus score. They don't increase your damage or anything of that sort. They just give you a bonus score. And the bonus killer skill is material and worm. So you need units of that nature in order to be able to basically get a higher score. Again, limiting players in terms of how much they can actually score. My highest score is 60,000 and we'll come on to that in just a moment because that's my biggest problem with this game mode right now is the scoring system, but we'll get on to that. So let's go into this fight. Let's see what we can do here. Um, we're going up against a pretty hefty team with Valera, Helga, New Arty, Galmas, uh, uh, Haruhime, and Astraeus. This is a very, very, very much so a very strong team. So let's go into it and let's see what we can do here. Um, of course, like I said, uh, for the most part, this is me just testing things out and seeing how it goes. So even if we don't win this fight, I'm okay with it, to be quite honest. I'm not really too concerned. In all honesty, I wouldn't necessarily stress too much about me winning this, not winning this fight, to be quite honest. Um, I just want to see how this goes, more so than anything else. So, let's see how this goes now. So, uh, let's see. Can we get a slow? Perfect. Beautiful. So, we're going to win this fight easily. This is not even a problem. So, round one, easy dubs, right? No issues whatsoever. And I had to use one of my strongest teams for this. Um, ideally, the best way you guys can get this done for you is to use your strongest teams for round one and round two. Then round three, you can use some other team, maybe like your weakest team possible um, that can still be strong enough to go up against uh, uh, an enemy. And then you can use your round one and round two teams for rounds four and five, basically. That's the way you should do it. Um, one thing to note is that this rank bonus multiplier is massive. You, the jumps between uh, Braver to Battle Princess, Battle Princess to King, King to Clown, Clown, I mean Jester, sorry, and Jester to Hero is quite significant. So that's something to bear in mind. You also have other additional scores as well. So you have Ailment Frequency, Penetration Frequency, Critical Frequency. You also have the Technical Playstyle, um, how many adventures were defeated, how many female adventures you had in the party. Did you have like six female adventures in the party? Stuff like that. I had, I think I had only five uh, female adventures. I don't know why it said six, unless... They count Galmas as a female adventure, you know what I'm saying. But if I were to go into this fight, which I'm not going to go into because this team will absolutely demolish me, you can see that the team that I had is now no longer valid anymore because they've all been used in round one, right? So that's something to acknowledge. And then, of course, you have this team again as well with Fina, Argonaut, uh, Lid, Gar uh, Gareth, so on and so forth. We might go up against this team, to be quite honest, actually. I might 
uh, try this team out. We'll probably see. Um, well, I see. I say probably see. I've refreshed it now. I can't use it basically. So that's another thing that they've brought back from Telskira uh, uh, under Telskira is basically the update system and being able to see your opponents and stuff like that. It stayed the same. There's no difference in that regards, right? Um, you don't have to worry too much about that front. That stays the same. Um, so we're gonna see what we can go up against. I'm thinking maybe some a team like this, for example, could be a valid option. It's something we can uh, go up against, and I might actually do this fight. Yeah, let's go and use this fight. Um, so what I'm I'm gonna do now is i'm gonna take my second strong uh, str second strongest team or my strongest team uh, depends on how you perceive it and we're gonna take this team now one of the issues i have with this game mode is unfortunately there is no easy way to change armor pieces because you're going into this game mode c consecutively right you're going from battle to battle to battle to battle battle to battle you're using different teams you're gonna need to change your armor pieces or you might need to even change your weapon pieces because you might have let's say two magical these days right one magical, the light magical easy, and of course the new hero festival magical easy. You might have not prepared two weapons for them, right? So you're gonna need to, you know, transfer over the weapons from one unit to the other. So there are a couple of ways to get around it. Of course, one is just letting them use it and then doing it the manual way of going in, changing equip and stuff like that. Or alternatively, you can save all your teams that you're planning on using for this uh, Telskir Abyss right here and it'll automatically get saved and effectively allow you to basically take the teams in regularly, right? That's one way of doing it. However, I wish they would implement a change I've been begging for them to make for a very long time. I actually made a video a couple of months ago talking about the most uh, the most important changes I want in Danmachi Memoria Freeze. And one of them was being able to like flip this menu effectively and allowing us to change their equips through this menu itself, through, through this party screen rather than going into a unit, clicking armor, okay, breastplate, pog, move on to the next one, so on and so forth. So that's something I would ask them to change probably in the future. Uh, would make life a lot easier for a lot of players, right? We already have a uh, breastplate on Lazar, so I'm not concerned, even Finn has it, okay. So that's fine. So let's go into this fight and let's see what we can do here. So this is obviously one of my strongest teams, right? So we're gonna see how they do here. Um, I'm going to be using this team in round 4 or 5 most likely as well. Um, but yeah, uh, again, this is where a lot of people may start to be concerned about these uh, uh, these issues where, you know, you're going up against players that are much stronger than you and have stronger boxes. Maybe they're, maybe they might not even have been, uh, maybe they're not, might, might not even be any good, right? You might have a stronger one team setup. But because they have a much stronger box, you're weaker technically. So I know a lot of people have an issue with that where the box is so important in this game mode, right? Where you need to have multiple units, right? There's a reason why my backline is able to get me such higher scores is because of the fact that I have obviously a lot of these material and worm killer fire and wind units that are capable of generating these scores, right? So that's also something to acknowledge and something to consider. And I'm something I'm gonna talk about in just a moment. Let's go up against this team. Uh, a combination of a bunch of wind units um, and water units, but uh, nothing seemingly too strong. So we're gonna go into this fight, I think. And I might use my uh, lightning team, I think here. Yeah, I think I'll use this. Uh, should I use my lightning team or should I use my fire team? Mm, let's see. Do I have any other good fire units here? Not, not, not Bell. Not Bell. Let's see. Material Worm Killer. Do I have anybody else that I'm potentially forgetting about? Maybe I've selected all of them. Um, so no, I don't have any more. All right, we're gonna probably see what I have for just fire and see what we can take here. Maybe, maybe that that will help us a little bit. Um, mm, we could take Vesta. Maybe we could take Vesta or Lid. Lid is a, probably a good option here. Yeah, we'll take Lid. We'll actually take Lid. Um, and see what happens here. We also have uh, Chloe, which we can obviously replace with Aina, actually, because we're going up. We can see the team we're facing off against, right? We're going up against magic units. So it's smart, actually, to take a team like this, probably. Now, his backline is extremely strong with Wealth and uh, obviously Bell in the backline. So we have to be a little bit wary on them, uh, uh, wary about them, to be quite honest as well. But I think we should be fine for the most part. I'm going to put some uh, equips now on as well, or, or some, I should say, memorials as well. May as well, right? to take advantage of this team right um and see what we can do here we're gonna take fire earth light da light damage endurance and dexterity all right let's see what we can do here i'm very curious to see how well we'll perform here and uh hopefully it goes well hopefully it goes well um I I somehow i don't think it's gonna go well but let's see who knows 2600 unit bonus this is probably the team that gets me the most score of course because it has so many of these uh material worm killers fire and or wind units right so that's also something to acknowledge right so yeah 
it's gonna be very interesting. All right, let's see what we can do here now. All right, Justice Ode goes off. Beautiful. There we go, and we win. The, we win this fight at this point, basically, because obviously, Lib Kage wrap it up, and uh, thankfully Elise gets it done. So four, three out of four, five fights done so far, and it's gotten us our highest score, twenty thousand six hundred. We've, I think, if I'm not mistaken almost matched my highest score already i'm at like 56,000. my maximum score when i got when i did king was 60,000. so goes to show how strong that team is in all honesty okay so now what we can do is you could go up against this sort of a team right um obviously because even though it has a dark t dark unit and water unit my win team that i had in round one the alize ryu Mel melia and helga team can probably combat this so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna use the three team setup to show you guys how that works i'm not gonna aim to try and get a high score in all honesty i'm not too concerned about that i've lost as you guys can see i went from a 1900 unit bonus to a 600 unit bonus so i'm gonna take this team and see how it does of course the main aim of this uh uh team is to just try and see how it goes and how we can fight uh, against uh, a team like this right with finn um elmina eyes and astraeus right obviously very very strong team here right very very strong team but let's see so hopefully we can uh win this fight very easily so uh we get that done all right now let's see how this goes so Dream Piercer comes into play. All right, we, we've lost our units there and I'm expecting to lose my in, uh, entire setup because Ryu dies. So I've lost this fight. I'm okay with that. I know I, I was taking a risk going into this fight. I knew that that uh, composition would have killed me. I hate facing off against that Lost in Princess Ice. So those are my final results. I got a score of 56,851, which isn't that bad in all honesty. It's not bad. And now I come back out and because I didn't win in Jester, I didn't use all of, uh, I didn't win all my five fights. I can't go into hero, unfortunately. I was very close. You could say that, right? Two more rounds and I would have gotten into hero. Um, but I didn't win. So that's that, right? That's that. It's game over. GG's, right? GG's. Now, let's talk about the reward side of things. Now, what are these scores? Go uh, what do these scores provide me? It says my total score is 193,000 and my maximum score is 60,000. So what does this mean, right? So if I go into reward, right, you can see that there is a daily total reward. Uh, uh, there's a daily reward. There's a total score reward. There's class rewards and ranking rewards. Now, the total score rewards go all the way up to 5 million, okay, which is a lot. It is a hell of a lot. It is a hell of a lot. And as you guys saw there, I only got a 56,000 score. So we're going to talk about that in just a moment and why this is a huge issue. This is my biggest issue with this game mode right now is the total score rewards. The daily score rewards is a measly 30,000 valus for just doing Telskira Abyss three times. That's okay, right? The class rewards are once only. You have to get five consecutive wins in your respective class effectively. So if I got five consecutive wins in Jester, I would get 10 Iris. And then I would need to do five more consecutive wins in Hero. And I would get 10 Iris and that's that. I wouldn't get another 10 Iris for every time I do five consecutive wins. So... That's also something to bear in mind. And then you have your normal ranking rewards, which are very similar, if I'm not mistaken, to Telskira Abyss. It's actually pretty darn similar, if not exactly the same as Telskira Abyss. Somebody can let me know in the comment section if I'm misremembering, but I feel like it's very much the exact same. You have the four star rewards on the top, the rank one and rank two to 10. And then you have your lower rewards where you get 60 Iris, plain and simple for just participating in all honesty, which is okay. I mean, you get basically, if you get to king and you get to like say rank anywhere from rank 200 to anywhere else right you're basically getting around 90 iris guaranteed there basically right you're guaranteed 90 iris right there now this is where my issues start to crop up in all honesty so as you guys can see if we scroll down and down we can see all these rewards here on your right hand side my face is covering some of it but you can see that the rewards are more or less basically you get 10 iris uh it's basically the same as well first and foremost it's very similar to the exchange shop that we had in the telskira under telskira event on top of that you get some iris as well locked behind here so you get 5 10 15 20, 20 uh, 30 uh 40 50 iris here 50 iris if you get to 5 million uh points in total right and uh, 50 iris plus uh, 30 plus 60, which is 30 plus 60, 90, 90, 140 iris. So you get 140 iris for doing everything. Now the issues begin here. And I'm going to talk about the issues that I have with this game mode and that a lot of other people have with this game mode. The cumulative score is horrendous. It is horrendously planned because 
I'm only getting uh, I'm only getting 56,000 and that's if I manage to even get to you know round four of jester if I go into king I'm getting a maximum score of 60,000 now I've actually done the math here I've actually done the math here and I'm gonna bring it up on screen right now so you guys can see this score so what I've done is I've only taken up to 3 million because I feel like a lot of people will get to around the 3 million mark right if I go over here right a lot of people will probably try and want to get to the 3 million mark or maybe the 2 million 2 million 200 mark at the most right Unle unless you actually manage to refresh your passes every single uh you know you're always on your passes you're always maximizing the score of your passes and everything which i understand some players will do but not every player will want to do that right so i did the math and the cumulative score is 3 million right and say you get an average score of 50,000 per run the tickets required to do to go from 50,000 to 3 million score is 60 and hours to refill a ticket is eight hours right so i took 60 tickets multiplied it by eight it takes 480 hours to refill that that many tickets and be able to use that many tickets and the days required for that is 20. look at the bottom left and tell me if you can make that you can't you simply cannot it's 11 days and 12 hours you simply can't make it now i decided to go lower i decided to drop the amount down to 2 million and I went to, okay, 50,000 score per run. That's fine. Again, tickets required per attempts at 40, right? And then hours to refill that is 40 times 8, 320. Our days required, 13.33. Still not enough. So the biggest issue that I have with this game mode, and it's something that I hope they change in the next update, is the rewards, the, the cumulative rewards, need to be scaled out tremendously. They need to be scaled down way too much. Either that... Or they need to update the modifiers and uh, the scoring amounts and go uh, make it go up a lot, in all honesty. I, I don't get it. I, I don't understand how they managed to not do the math here. Maybe they were using the best unit, so they decided, okay, this makes sense, right? It doesn't. It really doesn't. The average player should try and... In my personal opinion, I don't think a player should be able to get to 5 million, in all honesty. I, th that's fine. I don't really care about players not getting to 5 mil. The fact that players can't even reach the halfway point of 2 million or two, 3 million is ridiculous. It's honestly ridiculous. And I think that's a bigger issue, in all honesty. I don't really care if players can't reach 5 million. You're, you're not missing out on a crazy amount. You're missing out on 10 iris. Brother, you log in and you get 10 iris literally every day. Uh, in all honesty so i don't really care you watch an ad in game and you get 10 iris that's realistically not an issue what the issue is not being able to even reach the halfway point i think if if we have to look at it uh uh you know objectively or sub yeah objectively we are going to be approximately if you get fifty thousand per day or per attempt i should say it's you will get to 1.5 million at most maybe if you're lucky right if you're lucky you will get to 1.5 million because you get 150,000 points per day because remember eight hours to refill and a pass so that means you will uh, have three passes per day eight, eight 24 divided by eight is three so three attempts per day similar to undertale skira again and you're gonna need to basically use up all those attempts try and get it done each day is gonna give you 150,000. 11 days you'll get around to 1.75 million maybe you'll just miss out on the 2 million mark so that's something to acknowledge as well that's one of my biggest issues another issue that i know a lot of players have with this game mode is the requirement to use multiple attempts now you can obviously refresh using iris i would not recommend that do not do that this is not worth it i would no do not touch that do not touch that do not even get tempted by it it's not worth it you're better off taking more attempts in war games and trying to push for higher ranks if you are capable of doing it do not do this it's stupid okay please for the love of god do not do, do not do that now i know a lot of people are also annoyed about the fact that oh it's requiring you to use your box your it requires you to use multiple units it requires you to have a really strong box that's a you know you know you know allow, that's basically invalidating a lot of the new players and a lot of the casual players right i get that i absolutely do get that but that's where i feel i feel like it's a little exaggerated at that point personally i think for me personally i think that's a little bit exaggerated and i don't think that's an issue at all personally because i think also what's happened here is that i'm so experienced with other gacha games doing this thing already dokkan's battlefield if you play dragon ball z dokkan battle 
the battlefield requires you to do the exact same thing you need like 70 units at minimum to be able to clear out battlefield and that's that too you need very specific units you need the right type uh, to go up against the right enemies and so on and so forth it's not easy you, you need a very strong box and it doesn't it's not something you can do literally tomorrow it's something that requires time and a lot of effort and months to put into before you can achieve that sort of first battlefield clear in Dokkan battle it's the same thing with Dragon Ball's Le uh, Legends is uh, Dragon Ball Legends is ultra space time rush FGO actually put a event in their main story now of course if you play FGO JP you can correct me if I'm wrong but if I'm not mistaken in one of their chapters they require you to have a lot of units ready in order to fight and that's in the main story remember this is not an event that I'm talking about they put it in the main story so this is something gacha games have always done where they want you to have a lot of units ready for an event like this even Danmachi at one point I remember Rampage was similar ish to this it wasn't exactly like this it was obviously proper PvE content where you were actually going up against mobs and stuff like that so it was a little bit easy because you could cheese the enemies and stuff like that right whereas here you're going up against other players it's a PvP it's a form of PvP content right so it's really annoying in that regard so I would say personally when it comes to this whole thing of like oh they require you to use different teams they require you to be a little bit more smarter and stuff like that i personally disagree with that i think it's fine personally i'm not i'm not a, a big uh hater on that point i agree yes it kind of you know of let's let's newer players you know run at the risk of not being able to clear this game mode but let's be real right at the same time are we really saying that you missing out on 60 iris maybe like let's say you can at least get to braver and battle princess heck you don't even need to do anything you will literally get to 60 60 iris without doing anything just do one attempt at braver and get it done and you'll still be part of the ranking system that's something to remember it's not like there is a cap of like 201 to 5000 or something like that you literally just do one run you're on the ranking system you do braver 70 iris boom you're done don't have to worry about it right so that's something i will say like you're not gonna get into the top 200 you realistically don't have to worry about this this. and so you don't have to worry about the class rewards either i do understand that the cumulative rewards are very much desirable right the tickets the iris right the four star ticket and stuff like that i think that's my that's the main main issue but if you're a new player or anything of that sort just randomly do an attempt and get on out of there it's not something that you need to consecutively do unless you're interested in it and you're having fun with it which you can have trust me it, the, this is a game mode that i personally kind of like in all honesty in the sense of what they're what they're telling us to do here i like the idea the execution could have been a little bit better with the reward system and stuff like that but i personally like the idea and the concept definitely i think it's something a little bit different it requires you to use a little bit more brain it requires you to you know scavenge your box and be able to try and figure out like some setups that you might not have thought of right so for me i like it but i do agree there are some situations and issues with this game Another thing that I would probably recommend to change is remove the season bonus thing, especially at least remove the killer skill part. I'm okay with them keeping an element bonus, right? Because there's so many units of a certain element type and stuff like that, right? I think the material, the killer skill, like material killers, uh, you know, worm killer and stuff like that is not required. I think that's something that they can easily remove in all honesty. So for me, I would say these are my main issues with the game, uh, with this game mode right now. In all honesty, I actually don't have that many more issues. I think the, uh, the timer of the attempts is better than Undertale's gear because I hated the three attempts a day. In all honesty, I, I don't mind it refilling up to five, four and then maybe be, I'd be like, okay, I can go and run an attempt. And even if I go and run an attempt, I'm not limited by like, oh, I have to finish this attempt within like five hours. I can just leave it open and be like, okay, I can come back in like four hours and try again and see what happens, right? Or something like that. I, or I can continue my attempt in four hours time or something, right? If I'm busy, say, for example, right? Um, so there is that. But yeah, that's my main issue, I would say, is the reward system. Now, what I'm going to do is I am going to open up my community tab and i'm gonna see what people have to say about this and uh we're gonna see what uh the community thinks about it because i want to see what uh everybody else has to say about this game mode so like i said as long as you have three teams and even if you don't even get a high score to be quite honest it's not really that important the cumulative rewards are impossible to get as based on my maths that i've done and on top of that it's practically impossible to even also you know get into the top 200 so you're not going to be getting the great rewards off 
the ranking rewards. You're not going to be able to get the cumulative rewards. The class rewards you could try and get at least up to King uh, Braver and maybe Battle Princess. But you don't need more than that, so it's okay. Alright, let's see, Fujin. Um, from King 1, unless you are a top player, it's hard to get three consistent teams. So many people are just gonna, not going to pay any attention to that G new game mode since it takes so much resources, time, and strategy for just little rewards. I agree with that. I think that's also another issue is like it requires you to, you know, use your brain and ha try, uh, you know, do trial and error and stuff like that for little rewards. I understand that. But at the same time, a lot of people would also make the argument in return that, oh, it's requiring you to have so many resources and everything and it's, you know, it's catering to the whales for so many rewards that no no nobody can get right because nobody's putting that much money in outside of whales right so there is that whole debate of like they could do a game mode which is fun and interesting for an average player and the rewards aren't that you know uh, aren't that enticing for players so you know whales aren't going to be like get, just getting all the rewards in the world basically you know the smaller players can have fun with this game mode and not worry about missing out on rewards or anything right but at the same time if you do it the other way around where whales get a lot all the rewards and stuff like that people will be like well we can't get that so it's no fun right so there is that whole argument of like damned if you do damned if you don't kind of situation so there is that um, as for the ticket system, I think it's great because you can choose to, uh, to spend 20 doing all five rounds instead of waiting every day. That is fair. Absolutely agree. I think that's right. Um, so yeah, my main issue is I have with this, this is Re Revered Rogue. Hopefully you guys can see it. Let me actually just check. Yeah, you guys can actually see the comments. Beautiful. I wasn't too sure if my face was covering some of the texture or something like that, but yeah. My main issues with uh, I have with it is that it is really disadvantageous for those who are just starting or don't have enough units. And even if you have those units, hope that those units you have are 4 star and above. As enemies you will be fighting who have played longer will have much stronger and larger unit sizes. It, like I said, it definitely is catering more so to the old players more so than anything else. But again, like I've said, this is a tactic they've used in various gacha games. So I'm not surprised that this is even happening at this point. I'm surprised it didn't even happen earlier on to be quite honest. But I guess... You know, maybe that was what they intended to do with the old Rampage game mode way back when. Um, I want to actually see if somebody has a video on that because I might actually make a, uh, uh, a video on that talking about Rampage at some point. Let me know if you guys want to see that. I'm going to see if uh, there is a video on YouTube for that. Okay, I had to get a grasp of this. You need a minimum of three teams, all different with uh, different assists, different memories, all within B while being within other set guidelines. That gives you minimum extra points. Yes, that's how it works, basically. So you want to get those bonus scores. You want to have that first time usage bonus scores, right? As you guys saw, it was a difference of like a thousand points, basically, right? When we had first time units versus when we didn't have first time units. For maximum, you need all five teams with the criteria above. Of course, you can ignore some of the rules to create stronger teams and get into higher ranks, but how many strong teams do you have? This is a good test of your team building skills. My only gripe would be the re-entry fee. Re-entry fee wise, yes. I think if they wanted to make us pay Iris for more uh, passes, basically, I think it should have just refreshed all five in all honesty. I think 10 Iris for all five is fine. Um, but having, them, having us pay for only one pass for 10 iris is stupid i think that the eight hour period is uh, okay maybe they could drop it down to maybe six hours or four hours i think that would also be fine but yeah um but i do agree with him for the most part in terms of like good test of team building skills and whatnot i do agree uh with the uh, uh, other people though as well that this is also kind of like a drawback as well where you have to fit into certain guidelines and stuff like that i do think if they can kind of ease off the guidelines a little bit i think that would be fine i think it would make things a lot better if they just ease off the guidelines allow the scoring to be a little bit more lenient and it should be fine once again i think because at the same, like I said, the main thing that they need to do is just drop the cumulative rewards. And that's it. I think I would be happy with this game mode if the cumulative rewards drop um, in terms of things. It's for old players who have a lot of units. Absolutely. Uh, way too many, uh, way too much work for so few rewards. The way they uh, made it uh, so you have to fight five teams per ticket is also very time consuming. At least until you've built some consistent teams that you can pick most of the time. Also giving extra scores for killers and not being able to use the same characters for top score. is kind of stupid in my opinion. Uh, in a way it is stupid but at the same time with how many units that are available in the game you kind of can do it of course they don't want you to focus in on like oh you only have to build a fire wind team with material worm killer because there aren't there aren't that many units of that nature they wanted to build a fire team that may have a couple of material and worm killers 
they might want you to build a wind team with a couple of material and worm killers and so on and so forth they don't want you to they want you to spread it out so that your maximum score is even across the board so that you can get a maximum score because there's no point in getting a maximum score with one team and then a minimum score with the other team because the average is going to be much lower as a result of that so that's something they want you to do um I don't know if I, yet if I like it. It is different, but I do understand why people don't like this game mode. I personally do not have the best units, but I got to hero after struggling in Jester. It is challenging, and I think in that sense, the other UT wasn't serving other players. Nonetheless, I have to agree the attribute and killer part is pointless. Yeah, I think a lot of people are real fe feeling that. It definitely is better than Undertale Skira, in my personal opinion. I personally like it a little bit more than Undertale Skira. In terms of w the design they've gone for, maybe the rewards and such aren't as good, you could ar make an argument and say that I, I personally think they aren't as good especially considering you know we barely get a four star ticket and even then we can't even get to it because of the cumulative reward score but i do like the concept of it more so than i did uh undertale skira um there's also j dog too cool who says something at the bottom you guys can't see it because uh my for some reason my screen is on a cutting off but there's a reason there's five different ranks at least try to challenge yourself or what is the point of playing i agree with that i mean at least try it out see how it goes and uh see how you feel about it because i do understand that not a lot of people are enjoying the game mode but you can at least give it a shot get at least some amount of scores every single day you can go into kind of like auto mode use the same three teams and just change the order of the teams depending on who you're fighting off against and keep doing that at least you'll get some rewards right at the end of the day I, like i said these rewards aren't that crazy you're getting like like i said if you aren't a whale you're ba you're barely getting like 140 iris basically and this is assuming you get the cumulative rewards and the class rewards right um you're getting only barely that 140 iris and let's say this happens again in the end of the month so two weeks now two weeks at the end of the month that's 300 uh, 280 iris that's not even a multi per month like come on it's not that crazy it really isn't that crazy so i would say don't worry too much about this game mode um hopefully they improve it so that at least it's easier to get the cumulative rewards i think the rest of it is just fine to be quite honest i think a lot of people are damning this game mode because it's so annoyingly bad you could make an argument and say because of the box requirements and everything but if they make these slight changes where they remove the attribute killer uh, the attribute ability, the uh, the killer ability, bon the bonus scores for those two, um, and then of course make the cumulative score a lot better. I think this game mode will be a lot better and more accessible at least for most players. So there you guys go. Let me know what you guys think about this game mode. We spent a lot of time on this uh, new event. So let me know what you guys think. Um, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. I know my opinion is a little bit different compared to everybody else's, but at least hopefully you guys get what I'm saying in terms of the fact that, you know, it's not like you're getting a huge amount of rewards from this game mode in all honesty to be super stressed about uh, out about it being a bad game mode and the thing is like i said earlier on if they gave too many good rewards people would be mad that they have to do this uh, horrible event uh, to get those high rewards and some players wouldn't even get those rewards because it will be catered to whales effectively right so yeah let me know what you guys think down below in the comments please be sure to leave a like on the video subscribe to the channel and i will see you guys in the next one take it easy everybody Bye bye